certified financial planner. Uh, Jacob Gold is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. He's written a book called Financial Intelligence, Getting Back to Basics After an Economic Meltdown. It, it really lays it out. New York Times gave it a great review. You were on... Uh, you were in the LA Times here recently? I was. LA Times, Wall Street Journal, Fox Business. So uh, my publicist has done a good job. So this is kind of a, this is an approach, a step-by-step -step of what you should do to plan for your future and navigate the present. Right. right? And, and that is the main reason why I decided to go to paperback as well, right off the bat, is I want this book to be a guide. We have a great glossary at the back. I want people to highlight it, make notes in it, and get it dirty and really utilize it. Uh, I want people to have this as a guide. Any chapter you read, you can pick up that chapter and feel like you haven't missed a chapter. It, it, every chapter has its own story. Right. One out of ten Americans right now are out of work, so there are a lot of people who can't even consider planning for the future when they're trying to deal with the present. Uh, take a look at this next piece that we did. Um, you know, I don't know how long ago. It's been a few months, but take a look. This is what it means for Sherry Asbill to be out of work and having trouble collecting unemployment. It means that um, my phone bill didn't get paid because I don't have anything to pay it with, and it means my rent is due January 1st, and if I don't pay it, then I have to move. That's what it means. And it means I have a quarter of a tank of gas in my car. Everything seemed great for Sherry. She had a job here at Coulter Cadillac doing bookkeeping work in the body shop. She really liked it, and they liked her. But then on October 31st, she was one of 20 employees who got a pink slip. Problem was just a bad economy. I came home, I applied for unemployment as soon as I walked in the door. Um, started looking for work, um, calling people. But so far, nothing's come through on the job front. And it's been nearly six weeks and no unemployment check. DES says it's doing its best. There are so many unemployment cases, it's overwhelming. And that's kind of what we're left with, with a lot of people out of work. And we were talking in the break before we started taping. You said that you don't think unemployment, until that comes down, we're not going to get out of this thing. Unemployment is a lagging indicator, and it usually lags the economy by six to eight months, whereas the stock market is a leading indicator, and we're already seeing the stock market slowly come back. Can you explain that, by the way, before we get into the other question? Why has the market done so well in this environment? We came down so much, and once the perceived notion of the worst being behind us is in the front of people's mind, the stock market is always going to have the tendency to go up because the stock market is all based on future earning potentials of corporations. And if individuals feel that the worst is behind, earnings will only go up. As they anticipate earnings to go up, stock prices will go up. So it's really a look to the future. They're saying Absolutely. the future, you know, we're still bullish on, on right. America and American companies or whatever. And, and might I add that I do feel that our best days are still ahead of us in the United States. That's nice to hear. Uh, even though we're going through the worst recession since the Great Depression, and this is going down as being called the Great Recession, I really do feel that somewhere out in America, there's someone working in their garage or in their kitchen, and they're coming up with some type of product or innovation that's going to make our country even stronger than it's ever been in the, back, in the past. That's good to hear. Okay, now if you are investing right now, is given what happened with the market, I mean it was at its highs at around 1400 right? It was. So given where, where we ended up, we were in the yeah. 6000 6200 at uh, the bottom? That's correct, right in that range. Okay, I mean that is a colossal collapse. Absolutely. Is this a time where people should kind of rethink taking money off the table when their stock has made 50 percent do, do you say you know what pull a little back take some winnings off the crap table yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some type of correction over the next month or two just because we have come so far so quickly but nonetheless we still have a long ways to go to get back to a normal range and so for those individuals that perhaps are still on the sidelines I wouldn't encourage them to throw all their money back into the markets to write it up they should be dollar cost averaging taking a little bit of their money every month and putting it back into the market if someone's well diversified and already in the market experience some choppy weather over the next month or two mm -hmm. but over the next 12 months to 24 months i have to feel that there's more upside potential than continued that's downside interesting pressure. And, and my father was was in this line of work and uh, he told me he said look you can't time the market no. because you're either in or out because the big run-ups in a market 
happen in a two week period. Absolutely. So there is no way right. to jump in when it's right. rising. Right. You will miss it. Right. And, and the exact opposite is the case as well. Last October, in one week, the markets were down approximately 20 percent in one week. So you can't time the market of when it's going to go up or when it's going to go down. So that's why you diversify between stocks, bonds and cash, have a little bit in everything and have that long term focus. And the people who did that before this meltdown, they're OK right now. The people that that, that got were out, diversified. Or, you know, everyone felt the pinch. Everybody, bonds, stocks, real estate, it all came down last year. But if you were well diversified, you did not come down as much as the overall markets. Okay. And that's our overall goal for our clients is to make as much as the markets on the upside, but lose less than the markets on the downside. If you're trying to beat the markets, it's a zero sum game. You're not going to win. But if you try to make as much as the markets with less risk, that is attainable long term. Okay, now let's get back to the woman that Steve Kraft profiled back in October, as we found out. This was back as the meltdown was starting to happen. Right. Um, you're out of work. Mm -hmm. How do you possibly manage what's going on and have any eye to the future when you're in crisis? It, 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 it's a very difficult time for a lot of Americans. And a lot of people have to make sacrifices just to make ends meet. And whether that is walking away from the home, going to live with family, getting rid of cars or cell phones. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people are making some very difficult decisions financially just to keep food in their belly. And uh, this is the most difficult that our generation has experienced. We've got a couple of um, minutes here before we take a break. Um, for people with kids who are thinking about trying to finance education or college, do they do that? The 529 is a great instrument to do that. But do they do that first or do they plan for their retirement first? We don't want the cart before the horse. You can always finance college. You can never finance retirement. So I would always tell individuals, put money away for your retirement first. And then once you have enough set aside for retirement, or at least it's going projected to be enough, then start putting money away from the kids. How do you know what's enough? Well, there's a lot of tables. I mean, you can look at, we always tell individuals that when they retire, they'll probably need 75, 80% of their income when they retire. They'll spend that much of their income. Mm -hmm. So they their will. spending doesn't go down that much when they well, retire. Well, keep in mind, your biggest expense when you retire most likely will be health care. <laughs> and so we, <laughs> oh, have oh, to, we have to take that into consideration. Right. We have to plan for a worst case scenario. Uh, so you can quantify if someone's going to retire and be retired for 20, 30 years and need 85% of their income, you can come up with that magical number and work towards that and back into that number and find out how much you need to be putting away on a monthly basis to have that amount in X number of years when you plan on retiring. Okay, we're going to take a break. Jacob Gold, certified financial planner, author of uh, Financial Intelligence.